Well, hello and welcome to PM Express. And if you have not heard the breaking news today that the president, Nana Adudankwa Kufuado, has relieved or relieved the uh, energy minister of his duty, or I don't say sacked, uh, the Ameri saga, which came, the, the deal which was renegotiated, which was had uh, executive approval by the president, somehow today has with a major U turn. And uh, information reaching us is that the president says that Ejako should be relieved of his post. Now, that's uh, huge, huge news today. Now, is it good political capital? Has the president done what he was supposed to do? Is this going to send shivers down the spine of other ministers to sit up straight? Indeed, was the deal that bad? Because we had some few ministers who were somewhat defending that you know, it wasn't as bad as it sounds. So what happened that this evening, the news from the Flagstaff House is saying that the energy minister has been sacked. And that's the discussion on the table today. My name is Nana Ansakwal, chief of the Little Republic of Akwemu and Dumasa. And when we come back, that's what we are discussing. What will the way forward be? We're told that the deal will not be going back to parliament. It means it was that bad or not. Stay tuned. We're coming back. Well, thank you very much for staying for the first time on PM. As to whether you mentioned Amban Temsa or not, only God knows. But my brother is in house, Israel Lai. Israel, you're welcome. Thank you. In fact, it's, it's an honor to have you on my show. Oh, no, it's an honor to be hosted <laughs> by you. And then joining us by Skype is uh, Kojo Poku, who's an energy expert. Uh, Kojo, thank you for joining us uh, by, by Skype. Very good. Could you, if you stay on now, just start in studio and uh, uh, so how big is this news? I mean, well, it's it's big to the extent that uh, I mean, the energy minister, energy is everything, mm. really. So if we're having the energy minister being uh, removed, mm. and uh, immediately we're having to put the minister for lands and natural resources in that position, uh, it's. Let's also look at the stature of Boache Jaco. Boache Jaco is no mean guy. I mean, he has a solid, he has solid credentials. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's for no mean reason why when he was appointed as a minister or the nomination was made, everybody else uh, thought that this was, a, you know, the, the right guy for the job because he comes with so much gravitas. So, yes. And, and again, others would also speak about uh, the the clout he has in the New Patriotic Party. If, if you recall, before, the, during the campaign and everything else, he was out there, he was, on the, he was holding news conferences, talking about energy issues and all that. So again, it was not surprising that when the president made the appointment, he, he indicated that this was the guy who wanted to handle, to handle energy. And so, yes, uh, he's, he's no... He's no small fly. We also mm. know that he once he was expressed interest in the uh, flag bearership of the New Patriotic Party, and he contested the president. So, yes, this is this is one. It's, it's no small fly. I mean, uh, we're told he was a vice president of the Bank of New York at some point. Yes. Yeah. So, so I mean, he's coming with a lot of oh yeah, no, no doubt. But he he knows his stuff. Actually, mm. he knows his stuff. I, I would want to believe that he felt, here's one of the things, and I can't be speaking for, for him, but one of the things I understand he was trying to do was trying to drive um, the, the tariffs down. Mm. And the people who speak for him will say that one of the reasons why we're actually enjoying uh, lower tariffs, electricity tariffs, is because he had to renegotiate some deals. And apparently this American deal is one of those that he had to renegotiate, su such that we're going to spread the payment of uh, whatever we owed over a much longer period. 
and uh, clearly if you if you have a debt the longer the tenure the lesser you're you're going to pay even though at the end of it if you put it all together you're going to pay a whole lot more but for him he felt that we could spread it over the 15 year period and by that we can get to reduce the tariffs and he was talking about uh, what 10 uh, cents yeah there are about mm -hmm. you know per kilowatt hour so this was his way of uh, achieving the objective of reducing electricity tariffs that's the understanding that we're getting and really he renegotiated several others several mm -hmm. other contracts and he was in the energy sector and was able to drive uh, down tariffs now it turns out that Mary was uh, probably too uh, hot to handle and he touched it and uh, he's having to take a fall for it I it, it would take a lot of convincing for anybody um, to tell me that he took this decision so handedly I mean I'm, sh I'm sure that he it wasn't just him the decision to revise the marriage you couldn't just have been the energy minister. Developing story, but before I bring Kojo in, my last question to you is that is the energy ministry becoming uh, deputy sports ministry where, because <laughs> in the previous <laughs> government too, you know, yeah. uh, big fishes were moved from that ministry. It's, it's, a, it's a very important ministry, no doubt about mm. it. I mean, p again, energy is everything. If we don't have energy to run uh, this economy, we can't run the economy. So it's a really important one I, in in recent times yes you can say that it's become a very controversial ministry because mm -hmm. people go there and uh, they have they're having uh, to be changed uh, very often i i didn't think that um it had to come to this mm. with, with with regards to what but yes it has come to that he he was a solid guy he knew his mm -hmm. stuff and well, but the president knows best. He's, he's the guy who calls the shots and he's decided fine, that he's fine. fine. Well. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Kojo. Yeah, how are you? Very good. Kojo, how did the news come to you? Uh, it doesn't come as a surprise. Hmm. Some of us have been following this and others in the last block and we expected this to happen. You know, it's funny how Israel sort of a gap comes you to pray from the Bank of America as vice president and at this it shows he has a history function which think that he understands the numbers game. At this it was the numbers that caused his answer. So things the minister understood what he was touching. He, when you look at the history of what he's been doing in the last 18 months, you see some of you. He needs to understand how he. Kojo, let, let me try and get a good line because your line is really breaking. Uh, even if we can get Kojo on the phone to get a clearer line, please uh, try try that for me. But I I Israel, I mean, maybe the 75 million a year uh, may have been too high. Uh, but if, if, if we were supposed to pay 102 a year, 102 million a year, and he negotiated 75 over 15 years, I don't know the remortgaging of the loan would have been good. Is it just the figure that we, was too high for us or? It's, it's not a figure. I, if, you, if you put it all together, at the end of the 15 year tenure, it was going to look something in excess of $1 billion. Mm. So if you had about three, and it comes about 346 million, what we are supposed to, because we owe, uh, as of July 31st, I understand, we owed $91 million. Mm -hmm. As in we're supposed to have been paying a merit over the period, but we have fallen back on uh, those payments. Mm -hmm. So it meant that we owed $96 million, and then you add what we're supposed to pay 
until for the rest of the two and a half years, and it comes to $346 million. Uh, so if you're looking at the $346 million and comparing it to the uh, over $1 billion that you're having to pay after the, uh, in for the 15-year period, then people are saying that clearly that's, that's outrageous. Mm. And there are also suggestions that who's this miscellaneous company? Could it be that there's somebody who is coming in, a middleman who's uh, coming in to cream off? So that if we have, people are saying, okay, if you have $346 million to pay, and this, um, this company, miscellaneous, comes in, and it is having to take one point, one point, yeah, in excess of $1 billion over the 15-year period, uh, that's uh, similar. They're comparing it to the Ameridil, where we're saying that somebody had $150 million cool chop. So they're saying this probably is a whole lot more than the $150 million that mm -hmm. we're talking about. And that, for most people, I believe, is why they feel that this deal is, is really bad. I but if you owe, mm -hmm. if you owe, if, you own, if we're able to meet the payments and we have cleared the $91 million and we're continuing to pay, this really wouldn't have been an issue. But here we were, we, we're, falling, we, we're owing, and we're not able to pay. He feels that is a way to go about it. And so let, let, let's get, we have Kojo on phone now. Hello, Kojo. Yes, hi, Nana. Sorry, uh, my line, the network is quite bad. Like Very I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. I said it's quite interesting that everybody talks of Mr. Jacon having a strong suit in banking, and at the end of the day, it was the numbers that caused his downfall. Mm -hmm. You know, the issue of renegotiating existing power deals that has already been put in place, and you think that giving longer tenure means that the people can bring the numbers down and give you maybe a small percentage discount you have saved as money, you have to understand how those numbers were stacked up in the first place. And to me, that is the important part. I think most people who said this AmeriDo was bad and said all sorts of things and they are now in power did not understand the initial concern that some people had. You see, aside the $150 million, which everybody talks of as being the money that the middleman made, how the NDC also arrived at the $0.14 cents per kilowatt hour. And after that, when the machine becomes the ownership of Ghana, but it will still be run by Medca for another 15 or odd years, how those monies translate into another 10 cents per kilowatt hour, how they stacked up those calculations, all of that was problematic at that time. How the fuel was a pass-through and VRA was to handle it, though if you look at how much the per kilowatt hour that the government was being asked to pay, was all problematic. So it wasn't just the 150 million that was stacked up that was a problem. Mm -hmm. So I think those are some of the things that I think anybody who takes up the ministry should understand that there is a lot more wrong with the deal than just going in and saying that, oh, somebody is going to pay part of our money, and as a result, we are going to um, enjoy uh, some savings if we give it to the person for 15 years. So to me, I don't think uh, Honorable Ejako understood the numbers. But you see, uh, the, 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 the renegotiation, obviously, uh, I'm sure the finance, min uh, well, no, no, I'm sure. Uh, the issue is that we owe you know, a balance of about 346 million and we don't have that money within the next three years to pay. So his idea was that let me stretch it. And I'm sure it's like any high purchase where, you know, you buy a brand new Mercedes and look, you don't have the cash down, you, t you drive it away. And every month you pay in bits and pieces. And at the end of the five years, you would have paid more than the cash price out of the showroom. In that case, you and I can enjoy, you know, cheaper tariffs at home. Do, who oh, cares oh, okay. how long no, it no, is no, you enjoy the cheaper tariffs? Let me give a bit of education. Yeah. In the price buildup, there are certain elements. Mm -hmm. One of the elements in your price build-up is capital recovery. Mm -hmm. The other element in your price build-up is what you call O&M. There is two O&M in the build-up. There's fixed O&M and variable O&M. Then 
you have your fuel cost, okay, which all constitutes what you and I pay as a kilowatt hour. Okay. In the old America, this is how it was stacked up. We were paying 14 cents as a total per kilowatt hour. In that 14 cents, there was a breakdown. We have to pay about 5 point something, 5.6 or 5.8 as capacity charge. Your capacity charge is a combination of your uh, capital recovery, which is how much you are paying for the machine, and your O&M, which is your operation and maintenance cost. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, after you come in and say that you are going to negotiate that, yes, after, um, let's say if somebody took that machine now, Ghana still has some amount that you are supposed to pay. But listen to this. If somebody is being given five cents in a, 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 a build-up of 14 cents at his capacity charge, and he is supposed to use that to recover 510 5 million over five years, we have paid two, 250, half, almost half of that, mm -hmm. okay? How do you renegotiate that deal and give somebody who takes another 250, which is we paid half, somebody's going to take half. How do you give that person 250, the 250 that the person is absorbing? How do you give that person two cents? Two cents for 15 years. It doesn't add up. I, I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. No, I'm a, I'm a bit lost. Could you break it down for okay, me, please? Okay, let me break it down a little bit for you. You have a capacity charge. The capacity charge is made up of your capital recovery, which is the amount of money, because bear in mind, the Ameri machine, we never paid money for it. Like you said, it was work and pay. Mm -hmm. So for the work and pay, for the five years, we are told that we are going to pay a certain amount of money. And if we pay that amount of money over five years, that machine will become ours. I hope you understand. Sure. You understand that? Yeah. Okay. So now, the point that I am trying to make is that in that 14.59 cents, mm -hmm. your capital recovery was 4.2 cents. Your fixed O&M was 1.3 cents. And your variable O&M was 0.5. Now, if you add your capital recovery and your fixed O&M, you get a capacity charge of 5.6. Mm -hmm. Now, that was what we are supposed to pay for five years and that machine becomes the property of Ghana. Mm -hmm. We paid half through that. We are halfway through that, and we are saying that we don't want to pay anymore, so we are renegotiating. If you are renegotiating, it means that if you are going to give somebody a tariff for 15 years, okay, you don't give that person 3.8 cents per kilowatt hour for 15 years. Because that person is only inheriting $250 million. And the savings, as HML told you earlier, mm -hmm. over that period is over one point something million, one point something billion dollars. So clearly, you need to understand what you are stacking up. You see, when we put up these kilowatt hours, it's not a magical number. Every cent in there has a reason why it's there. The other thing also which this Ameri deal, the original deal didn't take care of, was the residual value of the plant. Because the plant is depreciated over a period of years. So as the plant is depreciated and amortized, the price of how much we pay for power from that plant should be much, much lower. So in effect, that's what I'm saying that though Mr. Jacko has the background of numbers, it's the numbers that let him down. So the deal that he rushed to Parliament, without having the finance minister to sign it, without getting the attorney general to give his opinion, and he felt that he has a good deal for Ghana. In the long term, from some of us, from day one, when we read that memo that he sent to parliament, we said that this is a worse deal than the American deal itself. Wow. I mean, one, one other thing I think uh, we shouldn't lose sight of uh, is the fact that we, the point has been made by the energy ministry that we haven't been able to keep up with the payments mm -hmm. so that we owed what's in the <coughs> region of 91 million dollars mm -hmm. on this thing why is it that we haven't been able to keep up with the payments and we need some answers as far as that is concerned because if it's the case that whoever is supposed to be paying 
is unable to, the min energy minister has to take a decision. Otherwise, these debts were going to keep piling, and at some point, judgment debt, I mean, somebody is going to demand. And you see, we had a standby letter of credit. And Mary has a standby letter of credit, and they could draw upon that at any point in time. And so I, the, the one thing I think we shouldn't lose sight of is we have enjoyed reduced electricity tariffs. Have we asked how we got that reprieve, the reliefs that we're enjoying? If we took the relief and uh, we all say, okay, I don't have to pay that much, how did we come by that? And I believe these, this Ameri deal is one of the ways the energy minister was able to, you know, manipulate the, well, I don't say manipulate, as in uh, re-engineer whatever that and renegotiate some of the agreements so that we can, we can get that. Uh, and it's something we should. And again, another reason uh, giving for the decision to review this, revise this Ameri, Ameri deal was the fact that government had decided that we were no longer going to, or we're not interested in holding on to thermal plants. And if you recall, government had uh, heading, and this was an issue that came up, that uh, government was letting off go some thermal assets. Mm -hmm. It was in the news, and everybody else was, was talking about it. It's a government policy. So is it that we're backtracking, the government is deciding to backtrack on this policy of divesting or letting go some of these. Because uh, at the end of the period, this plant is going to come back to, it's going to be owned by the state, and the state has to take a decision on it as to what it was going to do with it. So if we're deciding that we're no longer interested in managing thermal plants, this was uh, a decision taken by government. Uh, Kojo. Hello? Yeah, Kojo. Yes, okay, let me explain something that is not said more quickly. Mm -hmm. You see, this issue of it being a policy that government is going to give out its plans for people to operate. In that whole 14 cents that we are talking that we are paying, only 1.2 cents of that what we pay per kilowatt hour is operation and maintenance. So if that machine is given to me and you to run, all we need is 1.2 cents per kilowatt hour to operate that machine. So it doesn't necessarily mean that government is backtracking on its obligation or its policy to give these machines to other people to run away from VRA or any government institution. The other issue is that uh, people keep saying that, oh, if the Mary was deal was not done, we have obligations that we cannot meet. Look, when a Mary is running, and a Kosovo is running, a Sobli is running, and all the other power plants are running, the bills me and you, we pay for our electricity every month, it is not assigned to any particular machine. All that money goes into one pot, and everybody who is the IPP who produce power within that period is paid out of that pot. So if somebody from government is telling us that money is being accrued to ECG from when everybody pays its bills in a month, it's not enough to pay what Ameri is producing, that is a different conversation altogether. And if it does the case, then even so much so that the energy minister is fact, because he told us that there is enough savings in the port for Ghanaians to get 30% discount. And we all clap for him. We are all happy he gave us that discount. But if, again, he's telling us, or we are being told, that when all the revenue from electricity generation is, is collected, and a married bill, when they present it, we can't pay, because there's a shortfall in revenue, it's a problem. And we need to interrogate that decision that was made to push through a reduction. Because in that time, they made us understand that if ECG put their house in order and do not overspend revenue given to them, and they, they basically go and tighten their belt and spend well, we will be able to meet the revenue. And another thing that I will tell you, 
for 18 months that we've been in this country, we knew that the e and uh, plant was coming online, okay? Car power was to move from the Tema enclave to the Takradi enclave so it will make use of the gas plant. As I speak to you now, it hasn't been done. So the so-called savings that you're going to get using gas on car power has not even started. So look, I, I am not going to pull down certain things on somebody because he's been sacked. But there are questions that are coming up as is saying that look, if we are not able to pay the bill, what is the issue? Why are we not able to pay bills so that we end up owing and marry the 92 million that we are? Because I'm going to I'm going to take a I'm going to take a quick break and come back. But then my next question is that uh, did, did government not subsidize nine cents? per kilowatt on this Ameri thing and refuse to pay, hence the build-up of all this cost. I'm going to take a quick break and come back and then we deal with that issue. Dwachi Ejako sacked as uh, Minister of Energy and, uh, well, he seems to be the only one taking the flag for it. Really, Israel believes he did not just sit in his bedroom, make up a policy and just turn up in Parliament and say, look, this is what I did. There may have been somebody around the round table, you know, uh, aiding in the decision. But, you know, uh, is he being sacrificed, Israel, for our sins? Because here we are enjoying cheap tariff. And every energy expert has said that uh, Ghana does not, we don't pay for the right tariff because it's too much. So every government for political capital will say, look, I'll subsidize you, you just pay 10 cents and I'll you know, pay the rest. For a Mary, I'm told government say, look, 9 cents, I'll stomach it out of the 14 cents, you go ahead and pay. And they never paid it. And so here is this man who comes and thinks, well, the finance minister obviously maybe hasn't got 300 million, let me see what I can do. And they say, well, that's it, you go for the guillotine. Are we, you know, killing him for our sins? Um, I, I, I I tend to suspect that that uh, he's been made to pay the, the price for for it, because as I indicated earlier, I don't think that he he took this decision all by himself. There would have been extensive consultations, and looking at the sensitive nature of uh, this Ameri deal, this was this was an issue that was a campaign issue, mm. and you know then the. Um, the MPP then in opposition indicated that when we come into power, we're going to reduce electricity tariffs. And he, the energy minister, was the one to do the, to ensure that that happened. Now, he has come in and he has done what he has to do. I'm sure when he announced or indic told government that I've come up with a formula to reduce uh, electricity tariffs, I'm sure they were all excited by it, by the fact that this was going to happen. It was a campaign promise that was going to happen. And so he's, uh, he, he delivered what the, um, opposi the then opposition New Patriotic Party had promised the people, except, see, I am not saying that the whatever electricity tariffs we're paying or the tariffs that we're having, having to pay, you know, is, is, this, the case has been made that we're paying too high. And because if you look at the sub-region, indeed, we're getting, in fact, the electricity that Ivory Coast sells to us is exactly cheaper than the what we produce. And we, they sell to us with a profit. We produce. And so there certainly is an issue in there that needs to be looked at. And he talked about the fact that we had to renegotiate a number of things, the gas we were using. And so he had done something to that e effect, except um, it, with as far as this Ameri deal is concerned, it, it didn't go down too well. Uh, j joining us on the phone now is uh, Edward Bauer, Honorable Member of Parliament for Bongo and also uh, Member of the uh, Energy Committee in Parliament. Uh, Edward, you're welcome. Thank you very much, my brother. Edward, how, how have you taken this news and how has it reached you? Ah, for me, yeah, <laughs> I'm not surprised by it. I'm probably surprised because of the uh, circumstances surrounding the latest uh, activities of the minister. Um, if you have a situation where before you came into office, you as the key pol uh, policy advisor to the then candidate, Nanado, 
you had stated very clearly that the marriage deal was disabled with corrupt uh, decisions, and that all had uh, benefited the Red States because and then, uh, the end of the day, the Indians were, were the worst uh, in terms of uh, the details that were captured in that contract, and that we're going to do something about it. If you consider the fact that people's homes were attacked, uh, their wives and children were traumatized by gun welding security agencies, the least you will expect is that if you are going to give an alternative to that, you either equal the benefits of the existing contract or you, 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 you make them better. So for you to bring a, a document uh, that had an executive approval which also to a very large extent was going to convince Ghanaians to pay more than they said they were supposed to pay. Uh, it goes without saying that uh, you have given us reasons to believe that our taxpayer, uh, we as taxpayers, should not receive our money to pay you. So I'm not surprised that that happened. That being said, let me also state very clearly that uh, the former Minister for Energy, Wachil Jaco, is very low on the food chain. And I say that for a reason. If you go submit a document to a superior body for approval, the moment you submit that document to that superior body, the document ceases to be your document. The document becomes the property of that superior entity. In this case, the moment Honorable Jaco gave out that document to the president, it became the property of the president. So whatever decision that was going to be taken, it must also fall squarely on the lap of the presidency. The presidency in his own wisdom, even without any hint of an agency, because if you look at the situation, we were not under any emergency situation. He started to avoid the scrutiny of cabinet and give an executive approval. It meant that he had equally seen the, the provisions in the, uh, what they call it, in the contract. And, def and therefore, whatever follow that we are having today, the presidency should be complicit in this. And more especially, the executive secretary who signed that executive approval letter that was brought to parliament. So for me, I am not surprised, but I think that it is not enough. We should see more heads rolling. So what is not only an embarrassment to the government, it's also an embarrassment to all operators within the sector. And I think that uh, the better we dealt with this uh, I mean, I don't know how to put it. Edward, let, let, me, Edward let, me, let me come in here. You see, uh, you, you, your party or your government left a $2.5 billion debt with energy sector alone before leaving. Is, is the Jaku being, you know, sacrificed out of all the collective sins that have been left in the pot? You see, I think that you must also have your facts. There's a reason why the debt is called legacy debt. When they use the word legacy, it simply means that it's the debt that has been accumulated over the years. That's what the General Lynch regime came to the Kofod regime, came to the Tamil regime before it got to John Mahanga. So that's why it is called a legacy debt. As a result of non performance on the part of some of the energy sector agencies and also circumstances that they find themselves in. Indeed, you recall that in 2008, at the end of the debate at the KAUA, one of the key things that was debated had to do with the legacy debt. So to create an impression that the debt was left behind by the immediate past, uh, what we call the NGC government, is not accurate. That being said, to sign a contract of this nature has nothing to do with legacy debt. This has to do with the fact that you have a certain provision. You are committing the country into an, an additional expenditure that was unnecessary. And so there is no correlation between legacy debt and then a current methodological agreement that was brought before Parliament under the caption Edward, be, uh, uh, agreement. Well, because of time, let me come in here. With regards to correlation, I was thinking if you spread the debt, the costs come down. But I'm sure, just like me, you are enjoying low tariffs. But you are, um, you know, in the uh, Mines and Energy Committee. I mean, how do you think we are enjoying low tariffs? Now, again, I will make this point, and this will catch up with all of us. Go back and look at the statement of the current chief executive of Gritco uh, uh, when he was addressing the senior staff. He says that by the close of 2018 this year, they will have acquired.
estimated a total of 300 million Ghana cities dead as a result of the reduction in tariffs. He had also indicated very clearly, and if you look at it in terms of this year, as we speak now, Ghana gas, even though we are paying the legacy debt, Ghana gas is not being paid by GRE. And because of that, Ghana gas itself cannot pay GMP. We are accumulating to have six now almost 500 million in the energy. And these are huge debts that we have accumulated because of certain policies that we are taking. I agree with you that going forward, we must need to start seeing how we can reduce the energy tariff. But we can do that if we put our things straight. One, we are talking about what type of oil we are still running our generating plant. Was it crude? Was it gas? And was it water? We need to look at all those things because those things all result in the final end of the tariff that we have. So, so for me, for me, yes, reduction of tariff is good for us. But what is also key is that it's gradually taking back our, uh, our energy sector again to the place where we don't want them to be. A very poor financial health. Thank you very much. I have uh, uh, Kojo. Hello, Kojo. Okay, I don't think uh, Kojo can hear us, but uh, basically it's a time bomb we're, we're setting on. Thank yeah. you. Well, yeah, uh, we, something had to give. And uh, maybe. Well, so Ghana gas is suffering? I. I can't. I've had 500 million, I've had 700 million too. All right. So I don't know that for a fact. Mm. All I know is what the energy minister had communicated to us that uh, they had to renegotiate some some deals to to make it happen. And it was a, it, it was something that I put to uh, the head of communications at the energy ministry, Nana uh, Damwa, when he he came into the studio. I asked him that did we have to do or this Ameri deal that we're having to extend is that what we have to do? to reduce our electricity tariffs. Uh, he didn't quite uh, give me an answer uh, to, to that question that I asked him, but I've always suspected that some things uh, had to give. And one of the things that had to give, I mean, we had to uh, sacrifice or we had to do so that we would enjoy the reduced electricity tariffs that we enjoy and had to, was this uh, Ameridio that we had to negotiate. It wasn't just that. It was, uh, it was the gas prices. The, I, f I feel that there, there's some options that have been you know, put on the table as to you people are, are wondering, what do we do with, with America? And I'd like to go to something that uh, uh, Ishmaelaka, Ishmaelaka mm -hmm. used to, Dr. Yeah, Ishmaelaka yeah, used to be uh, with, with ASAP, he's, he's yeah. no longer yeah. with them, but he, he put a number of options on the table that he felt we should, we would have to look at. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, we're stuck with a Mary. We had a Mary, we had to do something about it. We had debts that we were not paying, and uh, they were going to pile up. And so, what do we do with, with, with a Mary? I'm trying to go to his, uh, his post, and mm -hmm. he, I, I shared his post um, some time back. So he gives some options, mm -hmm. and I'll go through the options. So he says that, um, uh, quickly, if I can uh, trace, trace that, I can readily, readily get okay, that. Let, let, me, let me go to Kojo, Poko. please find sure. it for me, and then I'll go. Uh, hello, Kojo. Kojo? Oh, the line just dropped. Can you believe it? Can okay, so <laughs> these are the renegotiating mm -hmm. options that he offers. He mm -hmm. says that we should continue the existing agreement and renegotiate for a subsidiary agreement to pay the debt after the current deal expires with minimal interest. Then he says pay the debt and pay the current and pay current and future obligations with a percentage of the proceeds from the energy sector bonds or energy sector levies and then uh, get a private sector organization through competitive bidding you know, to pay off uh, Ameri and restructure the current agreement into an agreed number of years. And uh, he talks about other options like getting a loan to uh, pay off Ameri or, or the debt. And of the, of the four options that he's giving, I think the, the 
third one is what we sought to do or what the energy minister sought to do. But he says that what we should have done was submitted to competitive uh, bidding. So other players come, come in and say, okay, and probably by doing that, we're going to drive down whatever we had to pay by way of uh, electric tariffs. And so we could have brought, um, you know, put it to competitive tender. Because Metka and Ameri seem to be, you know, uh, same Mit other different, Mit Mit different Mit Mitilenius, yeah, Mitilenius and uh, Metka, Metka. You know, not too far apart. Same other different in, in, in terms <laughs> of ownership. <laughs> so, but if we could have brought some other people on board mm -hmm. to look at this deal and uh, ask them how or what offers they could make to us, we probably may have come up with something uh, more reasonable. Maybe if we owed 346 yeah. million, or we're supposed to pay 346 million, and uh, this new company comes in and says, okay, I'm gonna take it, and uh, maybe twice that amount, and spread it over maybe seven years or something. Maybe, maybe it wouldn't have uh, looked this bad for governments to look that bad over the agreement I mean, for them to... Israel, I mean, are we so, as a nation, I don't know whether to use bankrupt, hard up, that $350 million, I mean, that's just two premiership players. <laughs> you know, just shakes us <laughs> to the core. I don't know, I mean, I'm not saying it's too it's small, but just, uh, does this shake a nation that 350 million, oh, look, we are stuck. Well, yeah, we're looking for money to... Um, how much? How much? Neymar, Neymar, whatever. That's two Neymars, isn't yeah. it? But we're looking for money to fund free HS. Yes, we. The economy should be able to pay three hundred and forty-six million easily, and it's not as if we're having to cough up three hundred and forty-six million. We're paying. We're supposed to do one hundred and two million a yeah. year. We should be able to, but then there are other things on the I, I on, on government's list. So government decides that. Uh, do I really want to um, make available 102 no, no, but Israel, this million is not, dollars? This is not yes. surprise 102 as if oh, we wake up one day and then boom, uh, maybe something happened and we have to pay 102 million to go and fix it. This is an ongoing thing. So I mean, are we so hard up that, you know, I, mean, I don't know. Well, I don't yeah, know. You, can, <laughs> you can say that. I mean, we don't have uh, 100 million lying around uh, for us to throw, you know, into... We, no, we, we, do, we don't have 102 million just lying around. No, we, we have to, we have some, some other sectors of the economy would have to, you know, sacrifice. No, well, let me pick you on your way. That that. The, the machine is generating electricity to you and I, and we are paying. So even if, assuming we are not paying the full cost, and we are paying 50%, well, that, you know, that should you see, be uh, one, of the, one, one of the difficult things we have to do, one of the things we have to do as a country, as far as the energy sector is concerned, is have a situation where we have an energy sector that's running so efficiently that government doesn't have to intervene at any point in time. Mm. You and I should pay our bills. Government should pay its bills to whoever is producing or generating the electricity. And if we're having that happen without any hitch, we wouldn't be sitting here having an issue having to come up to $102 million uh, see, a year to pay. Is what I, think, I think the issue goes to the beginning, where these same aliens, politicians, will go and sign these deals and come and lumber us with huge tariffs. Because like you're saying, we can buy from Ivory Coast at 10 cents. They are producing and selling with profit to at 10 cents. In-house, we produce our own thing uh, quote and unquote with no profit or what you know this is local generation 14 cents and so if, if it was 10 cents or 8 cents I'm sure we'll all happily pay but here we are we, we, we give you 14 cents and then for politics and vote sake we say okay well, no, you just pay half we'll supplement the rest and then we don't do it I mean, it just yeah. seems to go a round. lot of it too has to do with with debts that have been accumulated in the sector and uh, we're all having to pay for it Mm. So we are, we're all having to pay for it uh, one, one way or the other. And uh, so, yes, until we have uh, a mechanism where we are charged our tariffs, we pay our bills, everybody pays their bills, it goes to ECG. ECG also pays VRA and whoever is generating the electricity. 
and uh, they they are getting their money we won't come to a situation where government has to intervene every now and then and say we should actually run the system so efficiently that companies can come into the sector and say i'm establishing i'm generating electricity i'm selling it to ecg and and the rest of it and everything else should run let me take a couple of messages on facebook before we run away uh, this is Abuaji Peter. It says, from a simple but unambiguous post from Nana Damwa, uh, the PRO of Ministry of Energy, Nana Ado wasn't misled. Uh, Honorable Abuaji Jaku did not do anything alone. Email evidences are available to vindicate uh, Jaku. Uh, Kingsley Azuma, was he sacked for overstabilizing our power situation in the country? Uh, Alan Drake says, as for this one, dear Nana, you have done well. Uh, these are some of your messages uh, coming in. But I always give you this number before I go 024 366 2001. 024 366 2001. That's Tanti's fashion. Get. Uh, uh, nice shirt like what I'm wearing. My Israel, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure welcome. having you on the but show. See, at the end of it all, the question has to be asked what are we going to do with America? What are we going to do with America? <laughs> Probably give it to some country who needs it once the other plants come up. <laughs> I'm only joking. Tomorrow we'll be back to do this all over again. Thank you very much for watching.